Greg, I'm the People Development and Stakeholder Manager here at Blackpool Transport. As Andy said, I've stepped in for Karen, who can't be with us today. I hope I do her PowerPoint justice. It's a topic we are all very passionate about, so I believe I can. I just might not say it in the same way Karen would. Next slide, please, Laura. So back in the day where it all began, we were a culture of operational. Our drivers and frontline staff were known by staff numbers. Something our J, our MD Jane was very visionary about and set out about changing. But no longer staff numbers. Yes, we have staff numbers because at peak we have over 600 employees, so we need to manage them somehow. So we started um, to change this culture. No more driver numbers. Um, and people were known as human beings. And then what happened to change the landscape up to, which set us off on our journey of mental health awareness, not just for our internal customers, but for our external customers too. We received a complaint from a lady who was blind and had a guide dog. Her experience on the tramway was, it was scathing. And rather than thinking, we're not going to do anything about it. Our head of safety and facilities thought, no, we're going to invite her in and we're going to hear all about it. So people were invited in, those with disabilities, they came in and they spoke to us about their experiences. We did this also with our driver's annual training. Our, dri our, dri our drivers have to sit at least seven hours a year, seven hours a year CPC which is basically to make sure that they are up to, up to driving standards but we changed the landscape of this we brought these real people in so the drivers and the frontline staff could also understand what it meant for the customer and what they were experiencing so this is how our training changed it became people centric everybody within the organization completed the world host training which is a customer service training if you're not aware of it and we had a new focus on our customers and colleagues. We were expecting our frontline staff and all our staff, not just frontline, all our staff to look after each other and our external customers. So if we're expecting this of our frontline, then it's over to us now to do something about our, our guys when they're working for us. Thanks, slide please, Laura. So the customer experience team is one of the teams that I, I proudly lead. When we joined Karen and I five years ago, there was only half a post dedicated to customer experience. Really proud to say now there's, there's the six of us, um, but it's not just about customer experience team. We're all on board with this. We moved to our Market Street customer centre, which is where most of our drivers are based. And that made a complete and utter difference because we were just getting drivers talk, talking to us about different things and sharing their experiences out on the network. We changed the way we, do, we did things. We looked at the complaints, we investigated, and we understood what was going on on the network. We looked at it from the customer that was talking to us, but we also spoke to the driver and said, what did happen out there? What, what is the truth? Tell us what the truth is so we can educate the customer that is giving us this feedback. So we went from giving out thousands of pounds in compensation every month to educating our customers as, as to understanding us as a network and how public transport runs, but also understanding, us internally understanding what our drivers go through every day. Again, we, what we did was um, any changes that we make to the transport services, we speak to our customers, we go into the communities, we speak to our stakeholder groups. We don't just make a change because we think it would be the right thing to do. We speak to our customers and this hasn't been something that's happened overnight. This has been a long journey. We've been on it five years now and we're still not giving up. And we have made a presence at events and meetings. So you might see us out as um, a bus, being a circus bus, or you might be as something a lot more serious like hospital transport groups and council transport groups but it's just all about making a difference and listening to our people next slide please laura okay so so what as karen's named you know absolutely named this so this rich insight introduced was introduced into our frontline frontline training we 
encouraged our frontline employees to walk in our customers' shoes, to see it, to feel it, and to understand it. The drivers were able to empathise, and this got them discussing their feelings. The customer complaints started to reduce because we were crazy enough to say sorry, sorry about that. And we learned that not, no two customers are the same. Something's happened in your world that we need to understand because we know that your world isn't, isn't, we don't know what your world is. So what's happened in your world that we can change in our network to make it better. And we are sorry that we have upset you in your world. The compliments started arriving, commendations. We changed the flavour and the tone of them. They weren't standardised. They said, Vicky from Blackpool that travelled on the Service 7 said, you're amazing. We made, we gave the drivers some kudos around that. We recorded them, we shout about them, we strengthened our communications on them, we have them on tellies, we have them on newsletters. And in turn, that's, it's improved our reputation and brand, but the frontline morale and, and across the business is, has gone from strength to strength. Next slide, please, Laura. So as Annie touched upon, Lancashire, we know we are at the top of the league table for all the wrong reasons because we have complex demographics in Blackpool. And I'm proud to say that we completely and utterly get it at Blackpool Transport. Many of our low work, um, Blackpool Transport employees are loan workers and they're part of the demographic that lives in Blackpool. Some days they'll just sign up, they'll sign off and they won't have a conversation with anybody. Yes, they've seen hundreds of customers, but there's no rich, healthy conversation. So what did we do? We went up to Transport for London. It was a lovely, lovely journey pre-COVID, pre really lovely experience. And we've been to the Environments Agency to understand how they engage their people and their mental health models. We've worked with Lancashire Mind, Five Ways to Wellbeing. As we've seen by my colleagues that have spoken earlier, there are different ways that we need to address wellbeing. We've got wellness action plans and we've got safe spaces for our colleagues. If anybody needs a bit of time out, there are spaces where they can go and sit and take some time. And this is where you will find, you might need one of our 70 Be The Shoulder Ambassadors. I'm really pleased to announce this is not just me, this is a this is a whole across the board together. We have a be the shoulder screen, be the shoulder ambassador network. So if you see what we did there, BTS be the shoulder. So we've got 70 be the shoulders within Blackpool Transport. You can go to any of these 70 people and what they do, they will listen to you. You've got a badge, you've got a notebook so you can note your conversations, but what you're there to do is to listen. All these people were trained by our mental health expert and our champion, and they just know that how to have a healthy conversation with somebody. So one of our mottos is, you might not want to speak to one of those 70, but we've got in health support, just please find somebody to speak to. And we also have qualified first aiders, I'm pleased to say I'm one of them and I think we've got another five in the business, but that is really healthy and we really do shout about it and it has made a huge difference. Next slide please, Laura. Over well, here and now. So we are industry recognised and trailblazers in disabled access. I don't know if you've travelled on your vehicles, if our, our vehicles, I'd encourage you to do so. If you want to support with that, just let me know because I want you to get out there and understand what we do for disability and people's mental health and wellbeing. The training again goes into CPC, but we roll it out to all our front, front line staff and we include now employee wellbeing models. All our colleagues are proud dementia friends and this has seen such a difference, such a support. We know how to manage our customers that do suffer from dementia and we can support them. We're open and supportive. I'm a manager, I'm open, I'm supportive. Some things come naturally to people but we have put the training in place so our managers and our senior leaders can look after each other and our colleagues. We've also shared our lived experiences and 
managers talk about it. So what happens now is if we put something up about mental health, it's the norm and that's fantastic. It's completely normal to see something about mental health. We talk about our mental health because it's okay. Yes, I appreciate there is still some stigma there, but that stigma within this organisation is slowly drifting away. What next? What can we keep doing? Because I'm quite sure from what I'm telling you, we sound amazing. And I'm going to say we are, um, because we are trailblazers and we want to do diff things differently. We want to look after our people. But there's more. Lancashire Mind, just today, our Lancashire Mind surveys will go live. That is the first time we've ever done a survey of this kind. Sorry, Laura. See, I went off into my zone then. Thank you, Lord, for keeping up with me. Um, so we're doing our survey today. It'll go out in the newsletter and we've segmented it to different, um, different cohorts of staff in the company, like admin engineering, just so we can understand what's going on in the different departments, because we really do, when we say we want to make a difference, we want to, we genuinely do, and we want to act on what our people are telling us. We've always had a, excuse me, we've always had a learning centre, but we've changed its location to our Market Street, a Market Street site, which is a more central location for all our, all our frontline employees. We're going, to, we're going to build a monthly campaign. We're going to encourage all our frontline staff to have IT and digital skills. We've got positive sign posting. So we've got the Transport Benevolent Fund. We've got Voyager, which is like Credit Alliance. And we've also got wellbeing services, including counselling. Excuse me, I'm just going to need to take a drink. We're also designing a new corporate induction. This is going to be including being mentally healthy, equality and diversity, and a customer experience focus. Next slide, please, Laura. So in the future, so we've just mentioned the mind survey, that's part of our future. But our cult culture is going to be around organisational development. We call them wraparound skills in-house. Some other people may know them as soft skills. So we want all the things that we don't need to do, such as we don't need to train people in mental health. We don't need to train them in equality and diversity, but we are going to continue doing that. We want a coaching-led culture. Our senior leaders and junior leaders will be trained in coaching skills, and this will be threaded through the organisation. We've got great relationships with the local colleges. We've, we've taken on a membership with the Institute of Customer Service. They go through the company from our values and teach us how to deliver it for the better. We have really positive conversations. Um, Karen's a huge fan of the Wheel of Life. My, my colleague has been um, subjected to Karen and her Wheel of Life. Um, but I haven't had that luxury yet, but I know it's coming. But that's a really, really positive thing, um, and my colleague has really enjoyed it. We want to empower people and we want successful one to ones leading to career paths. So if you join Blackpool Transport, we want you to know there is a career path for you and you'll be supported whilst you do it. But overall, our goal is to create a culture of kindness and well being. And I'm sat here delivering this message. But it isn't just about me. We do it as a collective and we do it as a team. And I'm really proud to have been given the opportunity to deliver this presentation because it makes me really proud to work for Blackpool Transport. Thank you.